Hello, see if this works. <clears throat> Mevrouw Jansen houdt ervan om haar huis te decoreren. van het grootste assortiment. Yeah, I think I'm live. I still have to wait on the screen changing. Um, I've got the chat all worked out. I think. Yeah. Ah, oh, great. Hello everybody and welcome to this live stream on the day before Easter. Um, in Holland it's called Stille Zaterdag, which means quiet Saturday. Don't know what it's called in your country. Hello Windmolen Jungen. Oi oi. Hank. Hello Hendrik. How are you going? So, um... I'm just going to wait a couple of minutes uh, before I start my uh, hot takes. Um, see if there's more people coming in. Um, in the meantime, what are your plans for this weekend? So far, today, I've woken up early because I couldn't sleep anymore. Then I uh, recorded a video. Then I started editing that video. Then I played a little bit of Fortnite. Then I watched uh, an episode of my favorite TV show at the minute. It's called Shameless. Uh, it's an older show. Um, there was a, a show called Shameless in the UK. But this is the US version with um, uh, one of my favorite actors, uh, Jeremy Allen White, who's in the, the, in the bear right now. Um, and then uh, what else did I do? Uh, I went shopping with with Samantha, the missus. Then I played some more Fortnite. Then I edited some more. And then I had a bath. And then I had a lovely curry that Samantha made. And I started preparing for this live stream. Yeah. So, so those were my plans. So, uh, Windmolenjonge, what are you doing in um, in Scotland? Get Brassic watched, mate. I don't know what that means. Samantha was working on her crocket bee. Crochet bee. It's crochet, Hank. Um, Haken. Haken. You know, she's a, she's a hooker. No, no, she's not a hooker. Um, but not much big news this week, not really. No, no shocking stuff that we had a couple of weeks ago with uh, with Red Bull and uh, Christian Horner and Ben Sulayem being investigated. And it's uh, it's it's pretty quiet at the minute. There's there's a few things cooking um, regarding the silly season. So that's um, interesting to follow. Can you hear me okay? Because the microphone wasn't in my face. Suppose this is better. Yeah. Um. That's right, Hank. The storm died down. A Brassic TV program, Channel Four. If you enjoyed Shameless, Brassic is the next level. You'll thank me. Okay. I'll write that down. Brassic. Hope it's available on Pirate Bay. That's my streaming service. Ah, oh, there's William. <laughs> That's my son. He usually comes in and say, says hi and then he leaves again. If you hear any screaming downstairs, it's him. Because he's also streaming or playing on the computer with his friends. So, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to start with my first hot take. Okay? And I even have 
a picture for it. See? It's about Alpine. Hot take number one. Alpine will be much better before the season is over. New people in place and it can't get any worse. Yeah, so Alpine is in the worst place they've ever been, pretty much. They have scored no points and they're finishing pretty much last every single race. Although the last race, Ocon was closer to the points and he even said that if such and such hadn't happened, then he would be into the points. Now, usually with these teams... Um, you can't they can't sink any lower and if they're if you're on ground zero then it's easier to build up you know and um if the next race they'll score a p11 and a p12 um people will be positive again because there's no expectation whatsoever now what i've heard is that they put in this um a system in their um, um, development team uh, in a triangle, the same as uh, McLaren has. McLaren has this uh, triangle of people that report to... Um, I forgot his name. What's the team principal of McLaren? Italian name. Well, it doesn't matter. Um, and I And I think... You know, with the biggest uh, toxic person, uh, Laurent, uh, Laurent Rossi being gone, um, you know, they can start building that team from the ground up again. And the first upgrades, because the car is so terrible now, they're going to do magic and they're going to be right. They're, they're going to be a whole lot better, like like half a second, a second lap better. Um, so, and that's what I'm hoping because, you know, I like Gasly. I think Ocon outside of the car is is a lovely fella. Like on Twitter, every day he's uh, wishing happy birthday to people. You know, if somebody says, Esteban, it's my birthday today. Will you wish me happy birthday? He'll do it. You know, I might try that in June, actually. Um, I, I always do the same thing on Twitter. If I see somebody... Um, with balloon day, you know, if, if you open up your Twitter on your birthday, you'll get a load of balloons saying, hey, it's your birthday. And if you make a screenshot and you post it saying, hey, what's happening? It's my birthday. Then loads of people wish you a happy birthday. And it makes me happy when people do that to me. So every time I see somebody with balloon day, I wish them happy birthday with a little pie, uh, a cake emoji. Yes. No hearts, no kisses, because, you know, people might get the wrong idea. Just a little piece of cake. Um, yeah, so Alpine, you know, you'll, you'll see that they'll get closer and closer. And then maybe after the summer break, they'll start scoring points. And I even have a bet. See, for years, I, I've been having a bet with Jason that if I lose, I'm going to grow a... Bottas mustache and actually I'm excited about it because I want to have that mustache in November for Movember so my bet and you guys can write it down yes is that Alpine will score a podium before November okay mind you I want to lose so and um yeah it's going to be a crazy race with uh, lots of DNFs and a big crash and you know Max has a car that's you know damaged so he won't win and Leclerc is out and Saints is out and and you know for some reason Gasly or Ocon are in front and they'll get overtaken by Leclerc and Saints but P3 is for them and that's a podium for Alpine when nobody expected it so that's that's my hot take number one. Okay? Or number five. Yeah, let's go from five to one. Hot take number five. Yes. Okay, now I'm going to go to the chat because people 
in live streams like being involved with the chat. So um, we said hello to Brilliam. Um, Hank Ormel says, where do the Alpine boys go? Uh, well, here are the Alpine boys. Um, Wint Mollen says, Renault Alpine are going to sell up. Okay, so you think... You think that, um, what do you call them, um, Andretti is going to buy Alpine? That could be interesting, you know, because the, the first plan was for them to um, start driving with uh, Renault engines until GM comes in. But then, is Renault going to quit their whole F1 program altogether? I, I, I actually don't think that's going to make sense. Um to supply engines to Andretti and not be involved in F1 anymore. So I don't think I don't think Renault Alpine is gonna sell. I, that's what I think. But okay, and the next message, uh, Hank says, "Windmolen Junge, I guess they only sell Endstone." Okay, uh, Windmolen says Renault saw the new draft hybrid engine regs and saw Oblivion. Okay. Yeah, if if Renault sells the whole lot and Andretti can settle in England, that might be an idea. And I think F1 would be more welcome to that as well. So, and maybe that's why F1 didn't allow them in because they won't don't want to lose. Um. Renault with their engines and factories. That's something to keep an eye on. Um, Windmolen says, I think they're gone, mate. Okay. Uh, Hank says, in Viri is the power unit department. That's in France. Um, Windmolen says, I'll think they'll float the option. Not necessarily Andretti, Cadillac, will be the engine source. Yeah, that's what I thought. So, but yeah, um, the whole uh, Cadillac story is a, is, a, is a whole, it's a whole different narrative altogether. I, I think they'll be allowed in, in 2028, but with a new, um, completely own power unit with a new manufacturer. See, ideally F1 uh, would be the best if 10 teams had 10 engine suppliers because then you won't have all that bother that Zach Brown has with Red Bull owning two teams and um, Ferrari supplying to uh, Zauber and Haas and Mercedes supplying to McLaren and Williams, you know, because that influences the votes and it influences uh, things that are happening on track. Why is this not going any higher? Okay. Hello, PK. Thank you for joining us. En groetjes from Zuid-Holland. So if you're from Limburg, do you know Max? Because he's also from Limburg. Okay. So what did you think of the number five hot take? Any more questions about Alpine? Do you think they're going to score a podium if you think I'm crazy, then you can just let me know. I don't mind. Um, I'll wait for the chat to react. And then if I don't get any more reactions about the Alpine and the possible podium this season, then I'll move on to the next one. Whoa, PK, you really know Max? Tell me everything about it. This is interesting. Um, yeah, hot take number two. 
or number four, depending on what way you count. <laughs> ah, PK knows yours better. Nice. Okay, well, if there's no more uh, chat about the Alpine. Yeah, Hank, Hank doubts it. But that's why it's a crazy ba bet. And that's why it's a hot take. <laughs> uh, Windmolenjonge wants to know if PK is in the Roermond politie. And PK says, Max is Max in normal life, just as he is on TV. Okay, I'm just going to put the next picture up. Um, I'm going to leave the chat because they're talking amongst themselves, which is allowed. But I don't need to read it out. Okay, and then I'm going to the next picture. And there we have... Lando Norris. Hot take number two. Lando Norris will win a race. Lando Norris will win a race. It's been long enough and in a crazy race he will be lucky finally after being so unlucky in Soji. Okay. So yeah, you know, you know what it is with uh, not having a win or waiting on something. Um, you wait and you wait and you wait for ages, and then all of a sudden, two come along. So he might win a race this season, and then a race later or two races later, he'll win another one. You know, it's like I don't know if people watch darts. But you know how a nine daughter is really, really special? Yeah. And then for ages, you know, they keep missing the last dart or the second last dart. And the nine daughter doesn't happen. And then all of a sudden, in one match, you'll see two. I think it's even happened that somebody threw two nine daughters in a row. So that's that's pretty much what I'm talking about. So Lano Norris will be in that McLaren. He'll be pushed by Piastri because he's getting better. Um, uh, McLaren itself is getting better. You know, the, the the foundation for a strong team is there. They've got a strong engine. They're working hard in the aero department. There's enough money because of the sponsors. Um, they have great people working there. And they have two class drivers. You know, at some point... Uh, Max will have trouble again or Max will have a race where the setup is completely wrong and Norris will do everything right and he'll win his first race you know and he's been he has been extremely unlucky um like if he in Sochi was in second place and Lewis Hamilton had to have that choice of um, pitting and losing track position, I think Lewis, Lewis would have stayed on track or Lewis would have stayed and waited out and, to see what everybody else was doing and then he would have slid off the, the road and Lando Norris would have taken over the lead and he would have won. You know, it was pretty much the worst position that Lando Norris could be in when he was in the lead in Sochi while the track was getting wetter and wetter. You know, because nobody wants to give up track position, especially not on the first race you can win. So so that was unlucky. And then in the years after that, he was unlucky because Max Verstappen, a generational talent, was in the best car. And he was pretty much winning everything. And it's very hard to be in the McLaren of late of the last years and win a race that's yeah near enough impossible unless you get very lucky which he hasn't been um and i think see if he breaks his cherry he wins that first race then it'll be easier for him and yeah 
he'll win more. Um, yeah, in my last video, I talked about how Max Verstappen behaved as a rookie, never sort of saving his tire and always making it hard for people to pass him. Um, I do have some criticism for Lando Norris that he doesn't make it harder on the people passing him, even if their cars are a little bit slower, you know? Like, from a, a sportive, from a sporting point of view, um, you should never sort of let a driver take over your position that easily because, you know, it makes you look weak. And if you become a, sort of an annoying driver like Max Verstappen was, especially in his early years, then people will look at you differently and they'll be more careful trying to pass you, which makes it harder for them to pass you, you know, because you'll get a reputation. And if there's things, if there's a win at stake, then people will be careful trying to pass you if you have that bad reputation. And I think Lano Norris has been too sweet in that department. You know, um, I, I, I don't remember like any hard, dirty fights from um, from Norris. Um, I think there was a bit of contact between Piastri and Norris last season. But yeah, nothing like uh, Saints and Leclerc, for instance. They, they fight each other much harder. So that's something I'd like to see from Lando Norris. But yeah, hot take number two. Lando Norris will get a win. Now I'm going to the chat. Okay. Um, Vin Molen Junge says, Argh! I think he's a pirate. Hank Ormel has a hot take as well. He says, Piastri wins a GP before Norris. Uh, Windmull Jonge says, Like Bluto seeing Flouder in Animal House. I, I, I don't know what that means. And Pico says, He will win a race, but when? Not in normal circumstances. No, that, but that's what I explained, you know, the... Something weird needs to be going on. Um, but maybe, you know, Red Bull is terrible in Singapore again. And uh, McLaren has found a way to be really fast in slow corners. You know, who knows? Like Red Bull in the Mercedes dominant days, they always had a, a setup that made them quick on little street tracks like Monaco. So, yeah. Um, Hank says... Norris is lacking something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But I think it's the spice. You know, the oomph. That's what that's what Norris needs to get. Uh, Wind Mullen says, In all seriousness, Norris was quick across all feeder series. But Piastri is the max alike that teams are looking for. Now, I think Oscar Piastri is too timid as well. You know? Um, I don't know if you watch uh, Lollipop comics, um, but he, the 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 cartoonist, uh, always has Oscar saying, "Oscar," that's the only word he says. Um, but yeah, he's missing a bit. He's mi missing a bit of fire as well. Uh, um, Piastri, you know, like he's twenty two. You know, Max already had five years in F one by the time he was twenty two. And um, when he was 17, 18, he was showing more fire and guts than, um, than Oscar and, or Piastri and Norris combined. Um, so, yeah, like I, I, I try to stay away from uh, comparing Piastri with uh, Max because uh, they're totally not the same type. And uh, I've never seen anything spectacular from uh, Piastri, you know, like he won that uh, sprint race. Because, yeah, he was in the lead and um, he finished first. You know, it's not like he had to do an amazing, crazy overtake to um, to get into that position. Or, you know, have a wonderful strategy that nobody else thought of. Now, strategies are hard in sprint uh, races anyway. But, yeah. Okay. Um, um, Hank says... His team advised him strongly to, to pit and he declined. Uh, yeah, Hank is still talking about uh, what happened to Norris and Soji. Now, what I've heard, you know, in F1, is that if the track gets wetter, 
because of the weather. Um, the team will have a better uh, have better the, the team will have better knowledge about that because they have these radars. So they should have said, Lando, you need to pit because it's getting wetter. So what the team did wrong is they said, Lando, what do you think? Do you want to pit? And he went, no. And that was the mistake the team made, but also what he made. Um, now, if a track gets drier, only the driver knows what's going on. You know, if he sees, you know, I can't keep these uh, intermediates uh, in one part because they're overheating on the dry parts and it's time to move to um, slicks, then it's the driver that says that. So, but that's what went wrong. Okay, let me go back to the chat. Um, Weber. Vin Molen says, Weber is the smartest driver manager on the grid, the undisputed governor. Okay. Um, he wasn't all that great for his own career. <laughs> um, Hank says, Piastri has a stable head on his shoulders. Well, that's true. But, you know, if you keep on being stable, then we're missing the fire. Um, Hank says, Weber is smart indeed. PK says, I often ask myself if Lando is mature enough. Um, yeah, well, Lando at 23 is not like Max was at 19, for instance. But yeah, I don't want to keep comparing everybody to Max because he was unique. Um, but who else is his age? Um, um, George Russell? No, he's 25. Um, yeah, I don't know. Joe? Is Joe his age? I don't know. Um, uh, PK says... Uh, um, Hank says, PK, I agree. Uh, Vindmoder says, I was lucky enough to see the Russell Norris Albon years through Euro F3, GP3, F3, F2 onwards. If you asked me then about the future, my money would have been on Norris. Okay, I thought uh, Alex Albon was killing it. I think um, uh, no um, Lando Norris had a poster of Alex Albon above his bed because he was a fan. Um, Lind Molen says, but not now. And Hank says, so you can't so you can't tell by the junior career who's making it or not. No, that's true, because Max Verstappen, he never even won a race in F2. So, and now he's a three-time world champion. Um, Hank Ormel says, Piastri will run you off track if necessary. Okay, well, I haven't seen that very often. He had a few scraps with uh, Lewis Hamilton, and he, all, he always comes out as the loser, the one with damage. Uh, PK says, Max is the exception. It's a once in a lifetime. That's true. I agree. And uh, Vindmolen says, yep, that's the reality. That's the reality at Hank. Indeed, PK, that's the thing. Max is exceptional. Racing with Riku, Patrick, my friend, says, just dropping it, just dropping by to say hi. Are you not staying, Patrick? No. Because... You know, is, is the girlfriend, uh, does she have other plans? Um, Hank says, Riku, that's short. Yeah, that's short. By the way, the R was the response to Nora's photo. You need to watch Animal House and Bluto's. Oh, I've seen Animal House. You know, he shoves these eggs in his face and then he goes like this. And then they all go. Food fight! And they start throwing food around. Um, yeah, I've seen that. But I didn't know his name was Bluto. Because it's a very old film, you know. Um, Patrick says, I'm here, I'm here. No other plans tonight. She's getting back home tomorrow. Ah, so you got the house to yourself. Very nice. Okay. I don't see any more new chats, so I'm going to the next slide. And there's Fernando Alonso. Hot take number three. 
Alonso will try to get a better seat, but he will fail and he'll retire. Not one single team will risk it and he's had enough of Aston Martin. So yeah, th that's my hot take number three. Um, what I've been reading from Alonso and the comments he's making, he's done with these uh, lower point finishes. He's tired because of everything that he's sacrificed. He's 42. He doesn't have a partner. He doesn't have any kids. Um, he wants to be a world champion and he needs a proper car for that. So ideally... He wants the seat of Checo Perez besides Max. And then he'll sort himself out. Um, if Max decides to leave, which was a topic a while ago, but not anymore. Because I read today that he said in um, AD, that's another new, a Dutch newspaper, Algemeen Dagblad, which is... I, I rate AD higher than uh, the Telegraph. I don't know if the Dutchies here uh, agree with me. But um, Max has said, uh, the danger of me leaving um, is pretty much over now. Um, so I think uh, Helmut Marko's position is secured for as long as Max wants him there. And Christian Horner will put his plans to buy into the factory and the Red Bull racing team as a co-owner he'll put that you know away for a few years until Max leaves and then he'll probably buy himself in because those two things were the issue um, all that other stuff you know uh, Christian Horner being uh, sued and all that stuff that was all politics to get that idea of him buying in and getting rid of Helmut Marco out of his head. But anyway, we're talking about Alonso now. So, uh, Max Verstappen won't leave to Mercedes. He won't leave to Aston Martin. I don't see Adrian Newey leaving to Aston Martin, even if he gets a blank check. Because, you know, he's, he's making 10, 12 million a year already anyway, you know. And I... I, I don't I don't see Newey leaving for money because at the end of the day, are you going to be happier with forty million on your bank account or fifty million? You know, that 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 makes no difference. But the freedom he gets at Red Bull and yeah, so I I don't see Adrian Newey leaving either. So Alonso is left with staying at Aston Martin, uh, fighting for P nine and P ten. Um. The Red Bull seat won't come available. Then there's the seat besides George Russell. Um, but Mercedes isn't very good. You know, they, Mercedes, the way they're going out, they'll, they'll end up fifth in the championship, in the, in the standings. So there's no point going there. Ferrari is full. Uh, McLaren is full up. So I think Fernando Alonso is going to look at his options and say, that's it for now. That's it for good. He's leaving. And he'll be missed. But I'm looking forward to a fresh face. Which is something I talked about in my previous video as well. So now I'm going to the chat. See is there, if anybody is yelling at me yet. Uh, Windbolejonge says, Arg again. Uh, you don't like this uh, Alonso p uh, picture either? No? Because I, I took a bit of a sad picture because um, he's leaving, you know. Um, Patrick says, I think at most he would maybe get Mercedes. I don't think Red Bull will gamble on him at this point. No, that's my idea as well. Um, the Aston Martin has potential, though. Yeah, see, Hank, you're the biggest Aston Martin um, preacher here. But so far, I I don't see them going for titles. You know, see where they finish. Uh, Alonso was in P six until he got that he got that uh, penalty, the twenty second penalty, because Russell crashed. Um, 
so yeah, no, I, I, I don't see Aston Martin going anywhere in the setting they have now, even though everything's getting better. But, um, I, yeah, without Adrian Newey or any really big intelligence influx, uh, I don't see them going uh, to the top. Um, okay. Uh, PK says. Alonso should stop F1 racing. Yeah, there's different racing where he can go, which is a little bit less demanding, you know, not 24 races a season. Uh, and PK says, I agree with you concerning AD. Yeah, AD is a better, more decent newspaper than The Telegraph. Thank you, PK. Uh, Windmolen says, Fernando needs to retire. The third championship is not going to happen. As much as that saddens me, he should be a three-time. Yeah. like I, I recently learned that Alonso was a P2 three years in a row when Vettel uh, became champion. That's frustrating. Um, Hank says, why? He's better than half of the grid. And Windmolen says, because the game has moved on. And Samantha says, I'm glad Alonso is still there. Yes, he loves she loves Alonso. And Patrick says, at some point, teams want to go for younger talent with more upside. Yes, and with only 20 seats available, it's time for an influx of young drivers. And they're all knocking on the door as well, you know. And I'm not even talking about Drogovic because he's pretty much old already as well. Um, Hank says Aston Martin is better at the minute than Mercedes is and that's, that's true so that's why uh, going to Mercedes the way they are now is not uh, upscaling for him PK says Hank I agree with you that Alonso is better than half of the grid but he will not go to a top team and then Hank says progress does take time Yes, but Alonso is 42, so and he doesn't have time. Uh, Windmolen says, Hamilton is in the same boat. Kevin Magnussen, Nico Hülkenberg, Bottas are grabbing ours also. Yeah, that generation needs to sort of flow out gently, you know. Although I've heard that Audi wants to drive with Hülkenberg and Sainz, which, which is a pretty cool lineup as well, you know. Um, a lot of podiums between them. Um, Patrick says, Hank Orbel, I think Aston Martin will go as far as Lawrence wants Lance to go, unfortunately. Yeah, that's true. Um, I think Lance wants to get out already, but his daddy is making him stay. Uh, PK says, Alonso is a smart guy. He knows what he wants and he knows when to stop. And I think he'll stop. So PK and I are on the same page. Um, Hank says, that penalty was a disgrace, period. Well, what I think is really funny or weird is that they said uh, the consequences of the action... Um, doesn't decide on the penalty. But if George had a wobble because um, Alonso was braking and he would have stayed on track and he would have followed him closely, then there's no way in hell there was going to be a penalty for that. You know? Because drivers do that those things to each other all the time. Um... And basically, he says, all I did was um, take the turn a little bit different. Now, he was messing with uh, George Russell because he stepped on the brake. Apparently, yes, this is what I heard. He stepped on the brake. Then he had to step on the gas again to uh, go into the corner with enough speed. And then he used the brake again to make the corner. So, yeah. He he was playing um, he was playing with George Russell, and I don't think he expected George Russell to uh, t 
to be scared as much as he did and then go off track and uh, crash. That, that was never Alonso's intention. But anyway, that's my take on the whole crash of George Russell in Australia. Um, PK says, Hank, agree with you about the ridiculous penalty. Hank says, Lance is racing next year in World Endurance Series. Or, um, hey, where does WEC stand for? World Endurance Competition? Let me know in the chat. Um, Patrick says, that would be the only way to show they are serious. And I'm Canadian. Oh, now you're Canadian. I thought you were Romanian, Riku. Um, disgraced at the recent Canadian drivers we had. What's wrong with Gotifi? He was a lovely fella. Uh, he loves Nutella. Oh my God, I saw a big jar of Nutella in the supermarket today. They charged thirteen ninety five for that. Thirteen ninety five for a jar of Nutella. So we bought own brand. Yeah, I'm not made of money. Um, PK says, who's knocking at the door? I think Behrman and Lawson. Do you think any F2 rise, uh, drivers can step up? Yes. Um, Lawson, Behrman, Antonelli, those guys need a seat. Then um, Porcher, he was champion last year. He can be in. Then... Um, there's uh, that Canadian fella. His dad was a motor um, motor racer. Oh god, what do you call him? See, I know all these things, and then when I'm having a live stream, my head is completely empty. So an Australian fella, and his dad drove motorcycles really well, and he's always assistant of Will Buxton. In the pre-show. Yeah. Um, Saints goes to Audi. If he has no other option. Yeah that's true. Because I, I, I think. Uh, Saints doesn't want that stake year. Because there, there's. It's just not going to be fun. At stake. Um, in 2025. Because they're just. Waiting it out. Um. Windmolen says, Behrman is not that guy, folks. Trust me. Okay. I thought he did really well, that one race. Like, he, he showed courage, and um, he looked pretty comfortable in the car. But then, yeah, it got hyped up a lot as well. And um, I always say, one obsession is enough. So that's why I don't watch F2 and F3. Um, or Formula E, or any other racing because I'll probably like it and then I'll have no time left for anything else. Um, Patrick says, championship. Yeah, Vec. World Endurance Championship. Hank says, Lawson has proven he's able to drive F1 competitively in a shit car. Yeah, he's the only one that beat uh, Yuki Tsunoda a couple of times. So, and Windmolen has the right answer. It's Jack Doohan. Thank you, Windmolen. Hey, do you mind that we keep calling you Windmolen? Because if you give me your first name, then I'll say that, you know. You know, we are at first name basis now. Uh, PK says, Portier's okay, but Antonelli, I have my doubts. Okay. Um, Antonelli has to perform in F2. Or else he's yesterday's news. And PK also says Duan. And Hank says Mick Duan, multiple multiple world champion in the 500cc motor racing. Ah, Windmolen's name is Vic. As in Victor. Nice. All right, Vic. I will call you Vic from now on. I'll just remember it. Windmolen is Vic. I usually have to use uh, the first name a couple of times for me to remember. So, so Vic, 
Thank you for joining. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And there's the Ferrari team. Hot take number four. Ferrari will be just as fast as Red Bull towards the end of the season. Yep. Um, the development race is going on big time. But 2025 is going to be a weird season where everybody will be focusing on um, 2026, the new regulations. Um, and I think we're going to notice that towards the end of the season. Um, if Red Bull has enough points to get the championships in and, you know, maybe even four or five races before the end, they'll have it in the bag again. Um, then you'll see that Red Bull will stop you know, developing and Ferrari will be start will be hoping to start the 2025 season properly, especially with Lewis Hamilton being present there. Um, so they're going to probably keep developing. And then you'll see the last five, six races that they'll be just as quick as Red Bull. Now, I don't know if their strategy and the drivers will be at the same level as Max because you can give Max a strategy saying, okay, you need to drive 130s the whole race and he'll drive 130s um, all 70 laps or all 58 laps. Um, and I'm not sure if Saints and Leclerc can do that, you know, because, you know, they'll have a slower lap and they'll need to do a quicker lap and... Um, yeah, the, there'll be um, irregular uh, irregularities in their performance. Whereas Max is like a, a metronome, you know, tick, tock, tick, tock. Um, and, and that wins races as well, you know, um, uh, like a, a whole group of um, technicians and smart people back in Milton Keys um, doing all these numbers of everybody on the track. Um, if they make a strategy and they give it to Max and he performs it 100% like it's intended, then the strategy works. And that makes it so easy for them to work with Max. So, yeah, pit stops. Uh, you know, Red Bull's been doing that really well. Uh, Ferrari, they've been they've improved, and the strategy so far has improved as well. But yeah, so towards the end of the season, I think Ferrari and Red Bull will be just as quick. But it doesn't mean that Ferrari will win all those races. They'll win some of them, maybe. Um, but it'll be good to see, you know. Um see what Leclerc is made of in a good stable car and you know Saints um, I'd like to see him in a proper car as well because in the last years we've seen both of them crashing or in the gravel way too much and that's because they had a car that went from uh, oversteer to understeer in one turn um, and these guys they, they want to keep taking the risk and that's why it kept happening you know so that there are mitigating circumstances of why they crashed so often, I think. Don't know if you guys agree, but that's my take on it anyway. So let us go to the chat and see what has been said. Um, uh, Lawson has proven he's able to drive an F1 compare competitively in a shit car. Yeah, I've already said that. Um, the World Endurance Championship we've already went through that uh, Patrick says even more disgraced at the lack of Romanian drivers uh, more Jack Doohan oh I think I've already read all that yes uh, Windmolen says geen probleem which means no problem uh, Patrick says pain no more pain that would be nice he's talking about Ferrari because Racing with Riku is a big Ferrari fan. Uh, check out his channel. You know, he posted a video today about Saints. 
Um, but I think some of you have already uh, subscribed to his channel. Uh, maybe, PK, could you do me a favor? PK, could you do me a favor and subscribe to um, Patrick, you know, uh, Racing with Riku's channel as well? He's looking for more subscribers. He only has like 160, 170 now. Um, PK says, Ferrari will be faster. Well, that would be nice too. Um... Win Mullen says, oh no, Vic. Vic says, within 10 seconds. And Hank says, lucky Hamilton, he gets a good car. Yeah, but see, if Hamilton gets a good car in Ferrari in 2025, he'll still need to beat Leclerc, which is not going to be easy. Um, Patrick says, would be a classic Ferrari move to be faster right at the end of 2025, before the Rex change again. Yeah, that would be classic. And then at 2026, they need to start over again, starting from third or something. Uh, PK says Vasseur going to Ferrari was a glit was oh was a good thing to do by Ferrari board. Well, I loved um, Binotto. You know, I I loved how calm he was, and I loved his voice. He has beautiful voice. And he seemed very determined and calm. But, yeah, I don't know when what went on in the background. They wanted rid of him. And now they have this funny little French fella who I like as well. But, um, yeah, there was something about Binotto that I really liked. You know? Handsome fella. Um, Vasseur has definitely turned the team around in a short period of time, says Patrick. And Vic says, I bloody hope so. I had to sacrifice a lot across my F1 fantasy teams. Had to offload Red Bull Racing for Ferrari in the team selections. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't play uh, fantasy F1 because I'm afraid I might like it. And then that's another obsession. Um, Hank says, Vasseur was the good move indeed. PK says, I mean, Vasseur to Ferrari was a good decision made by the Ferrari board. Great move. Also had past relationships with the drivers, says Patrick. Um, I, I know he knows um, Leclerc well. And then, oh yeah, all the way back in F3, he knew um, Lewis Hamilton. So yeah. Um, Vic says, Vasseur is a canny operator. And he will try to change the operating culture across Maranello, and he's done well. But there will be that Ferrari shop floor prego moment. Yeah, that's always the case, isn't it? The, the politics of Ferrari getting in the way of good results. Um, Hank says, Hamilton was Alcon's choice, though, to sell cars. Yeah, that's what I think, too. It's more like a marketing point of view than, uh, than race results. Uh, Patrick says, as if Ferrari needs more help selling cars. Well, I was considering buying a Ferrari, but now that Hamilton's going there, I'm not going to buy him, you know? So, I, I, I might consider a Mercedes now. A, a 1985 Mercedes. Um, Hank says, making more money. Yeah. I do see Patrick's point as well, though, Hank. You know, that Ferrari, they're so up there with their reputation of making good sports cars that they don't need Hamilton to push it. But then again, with Al uh, with John Elkin being so prominently involved in this deal, paying Lewis Hamilton, like, an amount that will come up to $400 million, um, that there's more going on than just... Uh, than just racing, because no, no, no driver is worth that. <clears throat> uh, Patrick says, you're a gem, Wimbo. Thanks for the shout out again. Yeah, no problem. You know, uh, uh, Jason from Wheel Sports used to do this all the time when I just uh, started. So I know, um, I know how important it is, you know, and um, 
especially if you're growing like three, four subscribers every day, only 15 to 20 every week, then um, these little boosts are great. Um, PK says, you're welcome, Riku, but don't be mad with me because I am a Verstappen fan. Um, Hank says, Binotto is an engineer, not per se a people manager. Yeah, that was maybe the problem with Binotto. And that's why he was so calm and standoffish because he was very scientific in his ways. You know, like a like a professor, professor who's always deep into thought. Um, <clears throat> oh, hello, Vegas. Oh, well, you made it. I've only got one hot take left, but... Um, yeah, maybe watch the rerun because you can watch it at any time. Uh, Patrick says, don't worry, I'm a fan of Max's talent and I think it's absolutely amazing. Nothing but respect for him. Um, and Hank says, Ferrari is all about marketing. Ferrari decides if you are allowed to buy a car of their lot. Okay, yeah, so if I walk in and... In my jeans and my work shoes, then uh, they'll probably not sell me that Ferrari anyway. So, so it's okay. Okay, let's go to the next slide, and it's the last one, and it's about Danny Rick. Daniel Ricciardo will be sidelined for Liam Lawson in the summer break. Lawson can't be denied anymore. The sponsor deals that Daniel Ricciardo was brought in for are done and they can't be moved back. And Ricciardo, unfortunately, is a little bit done as well. Because the stories we're hearing now, you know, team principals saying, yeah, we need to make a car that Daniel Ricciardo feels comfortable with. Well, the last car that Daniel Ricciardo was properly comfortable with was the Red Bull car in 2018. And that's six years ago. Um, he drove okay at Renault, but there were things that he didn't like about the Renault car. Then he went to McLaren. It was a disaster. He never gemmed with that car, gelled with that car at all. And... Then he was out for a while. He noticed that he still wanted to drive. Christian Horner loves Daniel Ricciardo. So he put him in that. Uh, in that Toro Rosso seat. Or the RB seat. Uh, to replace. Um, Nick De Vries. And. He hasn't shown anything. Except one good race in Mexico. Um. And this season, you know, he's getting beaten in quality. He's getting beaten in the race. He spins. He doesn't pay attention to track limits. All these little things that, you know, Checo Perez gets crushed for in the Red Bull seat are happening to Daniel Ricciardo now. I love the guy. You know, I, I made a video, I don't know, six, seven months ago about... Daniel Ricciardo is going to be winning races again. But yeah, I have to admit that um, that I was wrong because his performances are disappointing. And maybe, um, you know, when he started driving, which was in 2013, the cars were different. I don't know, lighter or... Uh, there's there's something about his way of driving that gelled more with the older specs cars than the modern day cars. Uh, maybe that whole ground effect is not working for him. I don't know. But um, I'm sure he tries his utmost to make the best out of it. I'm sure that he trains hard, that he's fit, that he has great talent to be a racing driver, but the um, Daniel Ricciardo that win won Mo Monaco and got pole in Mexico, and you know the the Daniel Ricciardo that overtook two guys in Baku, 
in, I think it was 2017, by outbreaking them. I think that Daniel Ricciardo is long gone and he's not coming back. And then, yeah, why would you keep um, Liam Lawson on the sideline if you have if you have such a good driver from your own um, junior team that can fill in that gap, that is dying to fill in that gap, you know, because yeah, he, he all the stuff that he said on Drive to Survive was clearly because he wants to be in that seat. So, yeah, that's my take on Daniel Ricciardo being replaced. Now I'm going to the chat. I'm seeing sad faces and... Okay, Vic says R again. Vic the pirate. PK says sadness, end of career. Patrick says crying face. And Vega says, this is Lance's year. I can feel it. Yeah, Lance Stroll. He beat Alonso in Australia. Okay, Alonso got a 20-second penalty. But he still beat him. Um, Ang says, back to the demo team. Yeah, well, as a reserve driver, uh, he can still show up to the to the parties and uh, sponsor the th uh, things. And Vic says, the game is up, over, out. PK says, Ricciardo has to be a kind of an ambassador for Red Bull. No more, no less. And Vega says, Danny Rick seems undecided, tentative. R Ricciardo to replace David Coulthard, who's already over 50 says Hank or Mel. Yeah. Well, they can do things together. You know, I've seen a video of both of them dancing YMCA in the grass on the track. And PK says, Vegas, come on, you can't be serious. I think that has something to do with Lance Stroll. Why does nobody ever believe in Lance Stroll? And Vic says, I have been fortunate enough to meet Danny Rick several times over the years. And a more engaging chap you could not meet. Honestly. But in 2024, it's over. Yeah, I think so too. Um, and Vegas says, which one, PK? Danny doesn't seem resolute in action. No, he's, he, he is in doubt all the time. He's doubting himself. Uh, PK says, guys, I got to go. Wife just came in with some delicious junk food. See you next time. Enjoy your food, PK, and have a piece of vly from me. Bye-bye, um, PK. Um, and Riku says the same. Bye, PK. Uh, Vic says, Drive to Survive, Season 1, Episode 1. Remember that one? The most brutal exposure that the program will have. Vic, remind me again what happened there. And Vega says, win is a win. Yep. True. So, guys. I've already been talking for an hour. Uh, do you want to throw in a few hot takes that we can talk about for another five minutes? Before I close off. Something really out there, you know? Is there something... Is there something you want to throw in? Something wild? Um, is Perez going to win a race, for instance? Um, anything at all. I'll wait. Oh, by the way, I'm wearing... A Mr. Pulse t-shirt. See, here's the thing. Um, I like collaborations with other YouTubers. Now, because my channel is so small, I can't pay them for it, you know. Um, but I do like to help out. So what I've done for Wheel Sports, for um, FB1 Wheel, for Mr. Pulse, um, and for 
uh, what do you call him? Um, Jeroen that I did the, 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 the book podcast with, um, I bought his book and I've ordered a law VS t-shirt, but I haven't got it in yet. I'll probably get it Tuesday or something. Um, but I just wear, um, merch of the people I collaborate with to support them. Um, I'm not starting my own lines yet because with 1700 subscribers, um, if I get a t-shirt line, I'll sell three of them maybe. And that's not worth uh, the hassle of it. Okay, so big shout out to Mr. Pulse. If you like data-based um, analysis on races and uh, predictions, then go to um, Mr. Pulse and subscribe to his channel because um, that's what he does. Um... Okay, Patrick's talking about when Daniel Ricardo became a star. Uh, Daniel Rick's episode when he was off the Renault, starting in the streets of Australia. Yes. Okay, Hank says that the RB team is going to be the top five. Yeah, we're not seeing that yet, though. So they need to improve a whole pile before they can be top five. Because Mercedes is uh, P5 now. Um, and Vega says, Lance will actually win one this year. Legit too. No, techni no technical in it. Wow. Lance Stroll to win a race. And Alonso not winning a race. Okay. And Vic says, I think there will be another peculiar set of circumstances. At least two more races this season. Which result in odd podiums. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. And I've got my mustache betting on an Alpine podium. Yes, remember that. And Patrick says, I will buy your merch, Wimbo. Thank you. Um, you know what? Just send me 20 euros and then buy a shitty t-shirt for 5 euros in one of the stores. And then write my name on it or something, you know? It's more practical. No, I'm just kidding. Um, and Vic says there will be, uh, these will involve weather, mechanical penalty and circuit peculiar issues. Yeah, well, that would be good. You know, mix it all up. Um, Hank says Lance will have a horrendous crash due overestimating his capabilities. Um, I think I'm more on Hank's side than on uh, PK side about this. No, not PK. Um, Vegas. <laughs> and Patrick says, say Mercedes is P5 again without that smile on your face. Okay, I'll try. Mercedes will be P5 again. Um, yeah. So I've been, I've been chatting for an hour and 10 minutes already. So everybody, thank you very much for joining me on this live stream. It's been like three or four weeks since the last time, because I was really busy with, um, Mother's Day and then Easter. And I didn't feel like streaming last week, but this week I did it five hot takes. And I think, um, it was a successful little hour and I wish you all a really happy Easter. Enjoy your time. Have a nice breakfast. I'm getting a fry up tomorrow morning, you know, like a proper English fry up with sausages and white beans and eggs and mushrooms and tomato and bacon. So I'm looking forward to that. Right, everybody, I'm off. Do it, do it. Do it, do it. Happy Easter. Do it.